I'm lying on a $10,000 crystal bed underneath high frequency crystals infused with powerful healing energies. But it has no scientific basis or proven medical benefits. So why does it exist? I'm in Sedona, Arizona. I came here to work remotely in the desert and it turns out it's a pretty interesting place. It's where the ley lines meet. There are powerful energy vortices and it seems to be the crystal healing capital of the world. As a scientist, it's easy to be dismissive and judgmental of all of these things, but then it becomes harder to understand why they're so popular to begin with. So I set out to discover why are people so obsessed with crystals? Why do we believe extraordinary things? And what does this all tell us about human nature? This video is sponsored by Music for Scientists, a new album that's a thoughtful artistic tribute to science and the work of scientists. You can listen now on your preferred music service with the link below. Whether you believe in their powers or not, crystals and gemstones are part of a billion dollar industry, which means that crystals play a big role in many people's lives. As the wellness industry grows, they're endorsed by celebrities, a regular fixture at self-care Sundays, and a cornerstone of New Age beliefs. And a lot of people link crystals to their spirituality. A 2018 Pew survey found that four in 10 American adults across different ages and religions believe that spiritual energy can be found in physical objects. This concept has existed in First Nations cultures for tens of thousands of years, that natural objects can be spiritual or sacred, but only recently has it become big business. Still, our fascination with crystals is not new. The first records of crystal use by ancient Sumerians were for protection, to bring about good luck or put one in favour with a divine creator. Ancient Egyptians used crystals to ensure well-being and even buried their dead with stones to protect them in the afterlife. Crystals have an enduring history in many cultures, and just like the rocks they are, they have withstood the test of time. In the realm of pop culture, video games have long made crystals the chosen artifacts for players to collect. Classic Disney movies feature crystal balls to predict the future or relay some truth. And even the Marvel Cinematic Universe embedded every power in the universe within six gemstones. Objectively, crystals do seem like really special objects. They're beautiful and heavy and rare. And rocks and ore play a part in everything from generating electricity to building nuclear weapons. So is it such a stretch of the imagination to say that you can buy clear quartz to aid in concentration? Rose quartz to build trust in relationships? Or amethyst to rid the mind of negative thoughts? Think about it. Even if this is plausible, throughout history the healing and protective properties that have been attributed to the crystal have not been proven by science or medicine. Factually, they have no benefits. Yet a lot of crystal enthusiasts believe in them anyway. And it's not just crystal healing, it's energy healing, light healing, and a whole bunch of other questionable practices that promise to recharge your soul or repair your cells. Crystal therapy has a good PR team. This is Professor Timothy Caulfield, the author of the new book, Your Day, Your Way, and the more aptly titled, Is Gwyneth Paltrow Wrong About Everything? But don't let people fool you into thinking that it has some kind of scientific scientifically measurable power. Well, there is not any science to suggest that crystals can alter your mental or physical reality, a lot of people do report benefits. They report real changes. Crystal healing and energy healing is not going to reverse age your DNA. But for those who do believe, can crystals have a small but measurable psychological benefit? So I turned to YouTube and found Shannon from Reiki Gem Wellness. She was kind enough to agree to speak with an old weathered skeptic who has a lot to learn about the crystal community. And the channel itself is about helping people learn to use gemstones as a means of self-discovery, inner exploration, and just learning how to work with the challenges in their own life by using gemstones as as a focus tool, as a representation. Shannon said there are different schools of thought within crystal healing and that the benefits don't necessarily come from the stones themselves. I think it comes from within, which is why I use the term crystal wisdom 
on my channel just to make it a little bit more accessible for people. Like this is about sitting and meditating with your gemstones to, to think about areas of your life. Do you notice an effect after you use these stones? Yes. If I'm using a gemstone like howlite to reduce frustration because I'm frustrated. So I sit with the stone and I let it release. But the more I use it, then the quicker I feel those effects. I pick it up and like I could just feel the frustration releasing. It's a, a trigger tool to like enter that state of mind. But I was still wondering if there was a scientific effect behind all of this, or if it was just the power of suggestion, which can be powerful. If you believe that crystals will help you, can your brain then convince your body that their powers are real? Do you think there's a placebo effect when people use crystals? Probably, but I don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing. If you're holding tiger's eye because you want more confidence and then you feel more confident, then I, I, that, I hope that's a good thing then. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. As long as you're not kind of harming other people or yourself. Even though the placebo effect begins with belief, it can actually trigger the release of feel-good hormones. I spoke to a number of crystal healers and something became increasingly clear. Everyone was so calm and nice and relaxed. Even if it is a placebo effect, they are dealing with life way better than I am. Still, there isn't any research on how crystals affect our psychology or vice versa, even though a lot of people actually use them for boosting their confidence or managing anxiety. And the more that I thought about this, I figured, why don't I do the research myself? So I turned to what I know best, the gold standard in psychology research, the questionnaire. First, I formed a quick hypothesis. People who use crystals experience lower state anxiety than people who don't. So at a given point in time, crystal users will subjectively feel less nervousness or worry or tension. So I used a short questionnaire that's commonly used as a measure of anxiety. It asks you if you're feeling calm, tense, upset, relaxed, and so on. Then I designed my own crystal use questionnaire to measure why people use crystals, how many, how often, and if they experience their effects. And I used the good old internet to send it out to a random group of people. Okay, I will say this is pretty dodgy research. You have to pay per participant and I couldn't afford a very large sample size and this hasn't been peer reviewed by any other scientists or anything like that, like the research that I normally talk about on this channel. But I will say it is the first experiment that I have found that looks at psychology and crystal healing. And while some unsuspecting souls from across America were participating in my study, like any good researcher, I had lingering questions. Why do so many people believe that crystals are powerful? I want to understand. And I don't know what of, but I want to be healed. So I'm on my way to a crystal healing bed. Basically, there is this bed that is on top of a layer of amethyst crystals. You lie on it and then above you, there are more crystals. There's five or six of them and different colored lights shine down through the crystals to rejuvenate my soul. We will see how I feel after. But after an hour of lying underneath this questionable apparatus, I was more confused than when I started. All right. Um, I don't know where to begin. It was very relaxing. I got to lie down for an hour. There was some nice music playing. There were essential oils or incense or something. There was a cool sensory experience going on and it felt really nice. But right now, I don't feel any different whatsoever. I got hot while I was in there, so I took my socks off. Um, but I got pretty bored just lying there for a long period of time. I just can't understand why people would pay so much money to do that, either to buy the bed or to do a session in the bed. Maybe it's me. Maybe I haven't convinced myself enough of the healing power of crystals. Perhaps I haven't built up a habit around them um, to train myself or condition myself to be relieved after I use them. Or maybe I just can't be saved.
After a couple of days, the results were in. The average anxiety scores for those who use crystals were slightly lower than people who don't, but it's not really anything to get excited about. Anyway, I did include an open response question, which turned out to be a real gem in capturing the polarized public opinions towards crystals. What is the main reason that you use crystals? Calm mind, energy release, to connect with the elements of each piece. It's horseshit. People are often very quick to dismiss crystal users and any healing properties of crystals. Shannon even said so herself. I think that the term crystal healing can have a lot of baggage to it. And some people, it can be triggering. It can actually be triggering towards some people that, that don't believe it, that they, they feel like people are relying on magic woo. It doesn't seem like there's a big danger in a person's fascination with crystals. But is there a point where crystal healing can become problematic and dangerous? I think it becomes problematic when you really start believing, right? When you, when you sort of internalize the idea that crystals do have some kind of magical power. Uh, and why do I think that's the case? Because I think if you're, you're willing to believe a little bit of magical thinking like this, you're kind of jettisoning your, your critical thinking skills. They're so important to navigating life. And I think that that's something and we tolerate too much pseudoscience. You know, we tolerate health funk far too much because when you believe a little bit of magical thinking, you're more likely to believe more magical thinking. And that can really make you anti-science. And as we're seeing in this era of the pandemic, that can be problematic. And even some crystal users like Shannon draw the line somewhere too. It's a supplement, but it should never replace like medical care. So if somebody is, if they have cancer, then get your chemo and then sit with a rock to help you relax and calm down and feel better. So after surrounding myself with crystals, questionnaires, and spending an ungodly amount of time in Facebook groups, what does the one billion dollar crystal industry say about human nature? Human beings have a need to connect, to find meaning and purpose in our lives. And if we can't do that through other people or other forms of spirituality, many of us do turn to things like crystals. For a lot of people, crystals provide an alluring promise of hope where science doesn't have definitive answers, or perhaps where other psychological services aren't accessible. Crystals can be easily managed by individuals, and they're natural. Many crystal healing claims fall into the appeal to nature fallacy, that things of the earth are more justified, effective, and better for you, which isn't necessarily true. But even if it is the power of suggestion, crystals offer a path to relax, find love, build confidence, or to plant desires about prosperity. In an increasingly uncertain world, they're a stabilizing influence in people's lives. They can be collected, displayed, and give the user a sense of control. I think it's important to listen and get a sense of, you know, what are they getting out of, the, uh, out of crystals or, or whatever alternative therapy that they they're are interested in. But as people experience small and increasing benefits and their beliefs are confirmed, the role of crystals can grow to become more magical. But at the same time, I don't think we should be patronizing. We should be honest about, about the science. I think we can talk honestly about the science and not shame people who are interested in this stuff. There are certainly benefits to being mindful and meditative and intentional and reflective. And we can see this in the benefits that people who use crystals report. But there is a danger in magical thinking in that it can lead to a rejection of science and medicine. And that is where we need to be really, really careful. My intention in making this video wasn't to give more airtime to crystals, but to people, to understand people who have different beliefs to my own and to start to understand their hopes and fears and intentions and behaviors, to understand why they use crystals in the way that they do. And if that can teach us anything about why people might reject science and medicine and how we can better communicate with them. At the end of the day, a crystal will tell you whatever it is you truly want to hear.
Pseudoscience aside, there is a space between art and science that is being explored in the brand new album Music for Scientists that is out today. You can watch the music video for one of the songs For the Love of the Truth right here on YouTube. Please click through and say that you came from Braincraft. The album was created by Patrick Olson, who was actually one of my very first patrons because Patrick said he's concerned about misinformation and wanted to create the music as an artistic statement in support of scientists. The songs are really lovely and overall I think the album is a really nice tribute to scientists who do not get enough appreciation for their work. Patrick has been a big supporter of my work so it's also cool that now I get to shout out his work. You can stream the entire album from the music service of your choice or from the Music for Scientists website musicforscientists.net. I will put the link down in the doobly-doo. Thank you for watching, please be kind to one another and continue to seek the truth. I have lost my voice talking about crystal healing. <sighs>